Do you have chronic inflammation? Do you feel pain in multiple joints or skin issues? Well, the root cause may be coming from your gut. It's true. Studies show that oftentimes chronic inflammation, systemic inflammation, the kind that affects the whole body, starts in the gut. How does this happen? Well, if your gut is already inflamed, uh, and this can be caused for from a lot of different reasons, but if it's already inflamed, endotoxins can pass through the gut wall, mounting an immune response. This immune response then raises inflammation throughout the entire body. This often looks like skin issues, joint pain all over the body, just stiffness, achiness. So rather than reaching for those NSAIDs like ibuprofen or Aleve, uh, instead, look at your gut health. Fix your gut health, and oftentimes chronic inflammation is solved. Do you have to poop in between every podcast recording? Mm. Yeah. Justin, you sign? know about this? <laughs> yeah. Could that be a sign? <laughs> <Also>? <laughs> it's home a little bit. Somebody, My body is in fuego. Somebody <laughs> forgot to take their seed this week? or what? <laughs> No, you don't need to. I'm just extra regular right now. That's <laughs> yeah. all. It's very Man, much better than welcome you Welcome back, Cheese. Yeah, no, that's not what it, well, actually, he ate a bunch of pizza, bro. I like did real pizza. Pe real. You would like no I went nothing to pizza yesterday because Bro. well, I didn't eat anything all day. And then it was like it was the last game for flag football. And I'm like, okay, they're gonna have a party. And I was just like at that limit where I was like, I'm really hungry and it's right in front of me. I was like, forget it. Oh, you know it's what? going down. Jackie sent me this thing. You bring up flag football. By the way, how's your boy doing at flag football? How's that going? Yeah, it was good. They just finished the season. So, so she second. sent me the- We'll circle the, back to inflammation. Oh, we'll yeah. Sorry. To the, sorry. You, uh, want me to, you want to finish that? No, 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 well, because he just said flag football, and I totally forgot that I screenshotted this because I thought it was core participation in select sports ages 6 through 12. So number of kids, right? Yeah, so this, yeah. was, this was done just- um, you know, and everything you can think of, basketball, baseball, cheerleading, flag football, tackle football, golf, gymnastics, ice hockey, lacrosse, soccer, softball, swimming, tennis, track, volleyball, wrestling. Okay. What do you think is the highest? In and participation? Then, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what do you think some of the lowest are? Oh, uh, I would believe, I would imagine the traditional sports have the highest participation, like baseball, football, soccer. Soccer even, yeah. So, uh, kids. baseball, so remember ages six to 12 too. Okay. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, so what surprised me actually was tackle football was one of the lo lowest. Oh, tackle. Yeah. Sure. At that yeah. Age, yeah. So. Flag is a flag is a lot more popular than I thought a million kids participating wow. in that. Okay. Yeah. The highest was 3.9 and basketball is the highest. Sure. Basketball. Okay. okay. And then second is baseball at 3.2 million participating. Mm -hmm. Uh, soccer is 2.2, but there's a lot of things that are down in that range. Tennis, 2.1. I would have never guessed that. What? I don't yeah. know any kids. I don't know any kids. Yeah, yeah, two and and golf, 1.7. I mean, those were yeah. those were a relatively rich, high. Kids, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> a kids. slalom, you know, yeah. skiing. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have guessed that. Um, <laughs> Polo. I guess okay, track and yeah, field is something you get into when you get yeah. older because track and field was only at 286,000. That's not very high. Wrestling was really low to 144. Yeah, wrestling's low for kids. It should be higher. Gymnastics though. was eight sixty three, so a little under a million. Um, so that, but um, interesting. Yeah, no, some of these surprised golf. Me. Yeah, yeah, that golf is interesting. Golf surprised that. me. It, it, that one was and tennis. I would I wouldn't have thought that those are expensive ass sports to put a little kid time. in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought that too. I thought that was interesting. She sent that over to me, and then you just brought up flag yeah. football. It made me think about like, and what I was curious about was, you know, obviously six to twelve, so it's going to be a little skewed. But that the fact that flag football is a million and tackle football is seven twenty four. So do you know if obviously they've been making a big push with flag football? Mm -hmm. If it's starting to overtake, I mean, it has from six to twelve. It's overtaken kids. Oh, it's definitely an option like that wasn't there when we were coming up. So I think it's gotten a lot more popular. Uh, and two, it's a way to introduce kids to football. Uh, earlier so they can act uh, for like coaches it's good because we we kind of get them used to passing trees and like a little bit of yeah. semblance of like what to do for defense and whatnot but um i think it's it's a great kind of introduction that's like it's it's just fun it's not like super competitive all right here's but. a quick question before we get back to inflammation uh when when you're playing flag football is there a line do you have linemen no Okay, so it's all, it's basically who could, it's, it's just five on five, yeah. It's just passing the ball around the ball. They still have three guys, though. You that, run the ball. Don't you have three guys still that kind no. of act as linemen? No. No, they either, Everyone's a wide I mean, receiver. You have a, you, have, you have a guy, like a center, that, Hikes you know, back. you could still, you could still have him run routes. So and, that's and what do. I thought, because I played flat, 
flag football a little bit when I was a kid, and I remember there were no linemen, but you could blitz. You could blitz. But then you, you have one cone that's there that like is a, a usually you, you designate a kid to, okay. to be the all time blitzer, and then um, they have to run outside these two cones. Uh, so that way too, they can't just run right up. And so there's like little rules like that, that uh, try to yeah. account for ways that you can kind of cheat. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen it like that. Wow. Yeah. I think I've seen it before where there's like a, a, a lineman and then, or there's a, a center who snaps the ball and then two linemen that like, yeah, that but we do a lot of misdirection do. plays though. I mean, to keep from people versus and, uh, it, but how would you stop them? You can't RPOs. Like, physically, like you can't, physically. Oh, you could still like, you don't tackle them, but you could still block them. You can't, if you're an offensive lineman, you, you can't can? tackle a different defensive guy. Yeah. But you can get real physical and the guy can run over you if he wants to. Yeah. If he can, but yeah. flag football, you can't do that. I mean, there, flag yeah. football, there's still, there's contact. It's not, no, not I mean, they, it happens, but, um, they'll get called for See? it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they you can't jump much? either. You can't jump and spin. So what? yeah, they regulate that. You yeah. can't jump no, and spin. I can't jump and spin. Yeah, you have to just like oh, so juke they can't and catch move. You. Yeah, exactly. Because you can flag guard easy and like shift your. Yeah, hips. that was a rule. Flag guarding. So was uh, you could spin back when we played, but one time you couldn't multiple spins. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a rule. I remember <laughs> that, that was a rule. Some kid got real good at it. Just. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like if you do multiple spins, the they're like, spinner. no, but you could you could get away with one spin. Wow. But if you just kept spinning like that, they'd be like, no, I oh, can't do that. Oh, yeah, wow. it's interesting. interesting. It's fun, dude. Right. It, was, it was chill. But... All right, bring yeah, it back, back to inflammation. Yeah, back okay, to let's inflammation. go back to inflammation. Okay, so chronic inflammation, I want to define this, right? Because you could have like an inflamed knee, right? An injury there or something like that. But chronic is, you just kind of notice it throughout the body. Stiffness, achiness all over. Skin issues are typically closely related to gut issues. Because the gut, if the gut causes uh, inflammation, it's throughout the whole body, and it tends to show up on the skin. So you see rashes, dryness. Um, it can cause aggravation of autoimmune issues like psoriasis and stuff like that. And really, to fix these things, you have to seal the gut back up. Mm. You have to reduce the inflammation in the gut, balance out the bacteria in your gut, so get more of the positive bacteria, which then keep the bad bacteria you know, in check, and allow the gut lining to heal and the mucosa lining to heal so that that barrier is still there. Cause when that barrier, cause what happens with the cells of the gut is as they become inflamed, you get kind of these gaps mm. in between them. And that's when shit passes through. So when the pizza comes in, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> just wrecks like a wrecking ball. <laughs> it just I mean, through. I was kidding about you not taking your seat, but yeah, is that take, something you do? You like if you know you're going to do that or did you just fuck it off? Oh yeah. No, I, I mean, I took um, some of uh, Dr. Cabral. I, I was taking like some of the um, pills and things that I've been doing to reduce the overgrowth. Yeah. So I still like preemptively did that, but it like, I mean, it, I went off the rails. <laughs> yeah. It was my fault. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so regular use of a good probiotic is good because it, yeah. it, what it does is it, it keeps the overgrowth of bacteria from happening and the kind of bacteria like that seed has because of the capsule, it puts it where it's supposed to go. And that helps things move through. So SIBO and overgrowths mm -hmm. happen when things don't move through as, as like they're supposed to. So you mm -hmm. get this buildup and backup in the small intestines mm -hmm. of this. And then what happens is you'll alternate. So for people watching, this is what it feels like. You'll alternate between constipation and diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So it'll feel like it can't go. Mm -hmm. And then you get this buildup of bacteria in the small intestine. And then it's like diarrhea. So a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't have a constipation issue. I, I got the runs. And it's like, no, it's it's both. It goes back and forth. Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today's giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it. Uh, subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, it's a Black Friday sale. All MAPS programs, all MAPS bundles with no exception. 60% off. By the way, you could stack them up if you want. You can get them all. 60% off. Use it as much as you want. We do the sale once a year. It will not be back until next November. So you're going to want to act now. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So on, on staying in the topic of like functional medicine type stuff, I've got to bring up this uh, Gary Brecka guy. So someone, I'm going to leave my friend's names out of this. So I don't, um, I've already, I've seen, I think I've seen people posting. this. Oh, you guys have definitely seen this guy. So he's, he is part of Grant Cardone's 10 X guy. Um, I don't know their story on how they first met. He's, uh, he got really famous from Grant Cardone and Dana White. 
Dana White uh, shared his before and afters I've after he that, went yeah. through this guy's protocol. And so I think he's like a, a biologist slash functional medicine type guy. I, he I think, calls I himself up, a human biologist, right? Yeah, he, that's his, that's his, that's his like, title. Yeah. Is okay. that, I looked what up does that he's mean? Got, he's got a couple degrees and some things. He does. Uh, okay. um, where? I don't know. But human any, biologist and biohacker. He's been blowing up. Right. Yeah, that's his, that's his bio, right? Okay. So okay. he's been blowing up like crazy. I haven't paid that much attention to him, even though I've had quite a few people, oh, what do you think about this? And I've listened to a couple of the clips and I'm like, oh, that's a little, no, that's not how that works. And yeah. I'm like, that's a stretch or that's Correct not. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like a lot of his, uh, a lot of what he was talking about was like, addressing deficiencies within being able to test for these deficiencies yes. and then supplement those specifically. And that was like, uh, apparently this big game changer. That yeah. So there's not, okay. So that I don't like, uh, there's a lot of things I agree with that I've heard him say. So it's not yeah, like, we, we've he's, said, yeah, he, like he's said some similar. things that are like, and we've talked about like the importance of, you know, supplementing for the things that you're deficient in, right? Like that's that's a better investment than going out and getting a performance supplement. Right. If you're low on vitamin vitamin D or Still magnesium, pretty low on the totem pole, though. In terms yeah, of yeah. Especially as far as like the the radical difference is going right. to make, and I think that's what it made him kind of go viral was Dana White's crazy like physique transformation. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, I've been asked about this guy a bunch of times. Well, one of our cl really close friends who also has a podcast too. Uh, sends me over like, hey, what do you know about this guy? And I'm like, oh, that name rings a bell. And then of course, I, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I know who he is. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, something just seems off to me, but I don't, I don't know him personally, so I can't, I don't even say. He goes, yeah, no, something seems really sketch. And I'm like, well, I do know some people that have interviewed him already, and I have some friends that have met him and stuff. So let me, let me reach out. So I reach out to another friend who's already actually interviewed. He's been to her house and stuff like that. And I, I ask her, I'm like, hey, what's, what's this guy's story? She's like, ah, oh, you know, I'm. I meet him and, uh, you know, he's just, he seems off, you know, it seems like he's a little bit of like snake oil salesman type guy. And, you know, when that he, biohacking space can smells like that. Right. Right. Happen, and yeah. so he's like, again, this is all people now speculating. I'm like, Oh, whatever. So then I talked to another one of my friends and then in comes this text message and it's a picture of his, uh, what do you call that? Um, mug shop. Yeah, mug shop. Yeah, sent this to me. <laughs> and it, I, oh, okay. That's I go, interesting. oh, shit. And Cause... the thing that jumped out at me right away was, okay, come on. He's in his mid to late 30s or 50s, I think. So it's like, you know, some of us, I, I don't, I don't have the, like the, the best past ever. Right. So it's like <laughs> yeah. somebody could probably find some dirt on me when I was younger, did some stupid shit or whatever. But this is like 2017, and I think the I think it was uh, Grand Theft Auto. Grand, Grand, and I didn't say auto, just as Grand Theft. Uh, what's Grand or, Theft? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. It, it, I think it's a dollar amount. I think that's what. what so you what, oh, so a certain amount. Yeah, and it oh, says okay. five hundred to five thousand dollars at 2017. So this is not that long ago. So you're like your late forties. You're in your late forties, and you're going to prison yeah. for stealing something yeah that's a little character I'm, right i'm just like that's that to me is like i'd love to know the story behind that. i would love to know the story too now he's been on joe rogan now i haven't listened to the i'm gonna listen to the whole episode now this is all news to me right so this is all new stuff that just came out with me or came out to me a day or two ago and so i've done a little bit of my own digging but i haven't gone through and listened to this guy get interviewed i would i would want or think that joe rogan dug enough to figure this out like that's not like him to not do enough research to find that out and then ask that but i couldn't find anything on short clips or anything i just like looked up his education he's got a bachelor's degree in biology and then he has a bachelor's degree in human biology from the national college college of chiropractic i'm gonna make a uh, i'm gonna say something real quick this does not apply to everybody but definitely not i have lots of really really smart good friends that are chiropractors okay but it is interesting to me how oftentimes people from this space uh, are come from the chiropractic world. Have you guys noticed that? Well, yeah. I think it's because you you a lot of supplements. You call yourself a doctor. That's why. And See, I think so. It says doctor, and then boom. Yeah, you know. and there's. I mean, that just goes to the, our point that we've always brought up. Like, what a challenge it is to when when a client sees a doctor, and then it's like, oh great, now I have to overcome this. Uh, you know, so you, my doctor told me not to do this, and it's like, oh fuck, just because they have that. Acronym. Right? So you want to know what's interesting is that did you know that I got that Lane uh, messaged me the other day because Lane and him, David Brecca, want to debate each other. Really, and they want to be on our show. Yeah, oh, no I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, nothing's happened. Perfect. I haven't. Nothing's been set up. But he texted me and he's like, David Brecca agreed to debate me 
on your podcast. What do you think? So I sent it to you Hell know, our, yes. our assistant to set that up. I don't know what they're going to debate. Okay, so funny because, of course, that was like one of the first people I had to send to, correct? Because that's like Lane's. Yeah. That's his yeah, That's his thing, right? He's the right? pit bull, yeah. Yeah, his thing is to go after and go get. That's not my thing to do that. So yeah. it's just like, I was like, Hey, have you talked about this guy before? I first asked him his name. He's like, oh yeah, a couple clips. I've I've talked, called him out on his bullshit or what that. I said, Psh. I said to him, he's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like throwing him a juicy. I wonder what they're thing. gonna debate. I okay, Drama. so I, I wish that I had something better to to share with the audience of like the exacts because it's been I've been tagged several times on him, and he's he's said some things that it's uh it just doesn't science. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's like uh he makes leaps. Yeah. This because therefore that. What happens when you don't have any sugar in your bloodstream? You're dead. Twenty minutes into your workout, you're out of energy. Your yeah, body needs energy now. Regardless of intensity or set number, it takes three minutes exercise. to liquefy lean muscle. It takes three minutes takes to liquefy lean muscle to turn fat into energy. It takes five hours to turn fat into energy. Where do you think your body's getting energy? It's burning your own lean muscle. No, Gary. No. 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 Still no. 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 And and I'll I'll share one more thing too that is again that was shared with me in confidentiality that so I won't share that where the resource came from. Well, we'll, tell, we'll say it on the podcast. Yeah, well yeah, no, yeah. that's I won't share where <laughs> it's coming from. People. I'll just say that Don't it was shared with me. So like these results that he's he gotten some of these people that are just like amazing. Like one of the things that was asked by our friend that was just like, so this is real, just giving them vitamin D and this and that. And it's like, well, you know, a little bit of growth hormone and testosterone. <laughs> and it's like and so <laughs> She told me that. And I was like, oh, yeah. So, oh, uh, so this is what's probably really good. Really go yeah. And so, which also gives you, gives, explains a lot why these people get so bought in. It's like he puts them on this like peptide and hormone and growth hormone type yeah. of stack and then also gets their vitamin. I mean, imagine, imagine someone comes in, you do yeah, the you blood feel work. a nutrient deficiency. Yeah. Imagine, optimize their hormones. Yes. Imagine someone comes in and they're deficient in magnesium, vitamin D, and what's another big Maybe one? Zinc. Yeah. Zinc, right? And then in addition to that, which is life changing already. For right. And in like addition that. to that, they're they're middle aged men, Dana White ish age, whatever. They stressed sort of, out, yeah, stressed like so, probably low testosterone levels of that. Throw them on a little bit of testosterone, a little bit of growth hormone, fix all their vitamins. Just, I bet their asses feel oh, like yeah. it was life changing. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's nothing really magical about that. Though, yeah, that's so. a pretty dramatic shift for him. You see yeah. his like uh, transformation. Oh, know. he's got to be on. Did, did Dana White say he's on TRT? Yes. Well, that's why I, I kind of yeah. assumed. I didn't know. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty jacked, didn't he? There wasn't there a video of him. Uh, like bench pressing three plates or something like that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, he looked great. He yeah, definitely he looked great. Good. And I don't yeah. think that Dana has denied anything. Like no, that. So no, no, he's not the so. type. To I don't think yeah, he care. would. Yeah. yeah, and I don't. I don't blame people like that. Like again, my point is. You take someone like him, who obviously Dana White doesn't claim to be a big science guru guy, and you get somebody who can, you know, virtually talk circles around you in, in that in that field, and then they point you in the direction of a few things. You take it and follow through, and if you feel amazing, it's like I'm bought, I'm bought yep. in. You know yep, what I'm saying? Yep. Like I believe you. Like oh, so. Yeah. But I mean, supposedly he's gotten connected to a, a bunch of really big name people, and has been. Yeah, I see him making the rounds. Yeah, and a lot of people are. Uh, I mean. I've seen a few videos where he's doing big, huge, like Ted talk kind of stages and so he's you're getting a lot you, of notoriety. Well, you like said Huberman kind of. Yeah. Notoriety. You said that, which was funny because I've actually had two other people now make that exact same reference. Like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. They're, they're blowing him up like Huberman all of a sudden. Yeah. I, I don't know much about the guy. I was just like, I noticed that like he was getting a lot of that attention. Whole bio quote unquote biohacking space. I hate to say it is, uh, and it's not that different from, I guess, uh, the other spaces in the fitness and health space, but it's really full of a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of snake oil crap and a lot of just that whole space just gets filled. I mean, would you say, though, it's like the whole pseudoscience thing has always been around, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just, if, I think because of the the internet and social media, yeah. it, it, it just moves and it's more prevalent because of that. Well, biohacking exploded. It wasn't a thing. And then all of a sudden it became everything. You know, Thanks, and now Dave. it's kind of a parody. Thanks, Dave Asprey. Yeah. <laughs> I have something about Gary here that I thought you were going to bring up as to why he's blowing up a lot, especially on TikTok. And what is it? There's oh. this thing, this routine he's kind of coined. I don't know if he's coined it, but basically it's called 30, 30, 30. So basically you wake up and within the thir first 30 minutes waking up, you get 30 grams of protein. Followed by thirty minutes of walking. Hey, bro, isn't that like the scam one hundred and one? Like, know, like come up with like a, just a, a just like a, a gimmick that works. Uh, like, there's nothing. Like, hey, I, that is a good idea. Introducing you know, the it, five 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 yes, program. Yes, dude, I, why didn't you come up with something like that? I could. We'd be rich I by got now. Too much integrity. Come on. <laughs> 
Well, you know, introducing they, our next program, 69 420. <laughs> <laughs> I like those numbers. There, yeah. There's some there's something that uh I mean, you could still have integrity what he's uh, what he's uh offering up or what I he's I mean, the suggest- average person wakes up has 30 grams of protein and goes for a 30 minute walk. They're going to vastly yeah. improve their health. And then does 30 minutes of steady state? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Because what do we talk about? Yeah. The uh, average American barely even hits 3500 steps. You do 60 minutes of moving in the morning first thing when you wake up, you're going to surpass yeah. that. So right away you regulate your blood sugar by eating protein first. Most yeah. what do we what do we always say? He Almost just everybody it. Yeah. everybody yeah. we know that we've ever trained is under consuming protein. And yeah. what did we always say is one of the hardest meals to get it in? Breakfast. Breakfast. Yeah. So if you make them get 30 grams. Is he selling the- a protein powder? I bet you. Uh, okay. Not yet. Right. That's coming next. Yeah. He's- <laughs> <laughs> Before we sell supplements, Adam. Yeah. Gosh, damn it. That's the 10X <laughs> way, you guys. Hey, you guys want to hear some weird shit that I just learned? I love, yeah, yeah. Let's hear okay, it. Okay. So you guys know what acetaminophen is? Right? Mm-hmm. Tylenol, active ingredient. Tylenol. Yeah. Do you guys know how it works? How it works? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. No, nope. Don't no worry. Idea. Nobody else does either. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. <laughs> so, <Really>? yes. <laughs> I like scratch my Doug, brain. Look up. I thought it like blocks some blood no, no, path. No, 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 no. no it's not like, look it's, up, it doesn't block something. Doug, Google, how does acetaminophen work? No. They really don't know. I'll sound like a complete idiot. So, you have NSAIDs, explained. right? Non steroidal anti inflammatories. Okay. And with those, like ibuprofen, yeah. um, naproxen, um, aspirin. And what those do is they they interrupt or work with the inflammatory uh, system and how you produce things that produce inflammation. Okay, they actually block some of those things. So we know how those work. We don't know how acetaminophen works. We really don't know. And I've known this for a while because when you have a lot of pain, they allow you to combine acetaminophen with NSAIDs. Right. So what does that say? You alternate it a lot of times. It doesn't say how it works. No, it does not. Yeah, yeah. So it's believed to do certain things. Yeah, but how? How does it work? They don't know, I guess. Uh, how about if you put? It might block the enzyme production in the brain. See, I knew it blocked something. Oh, sh- I swear to God, it's, <laughs> I mean, I yeah, remember. of course it. Does. <laughs> yeah, it blocks something and encourages other things. <laughs> I like it. Just leave it at that. It says it might block the enzyme production in the brain, thus blocking further transmission of the pra- of pain uh, nerve impulses. So they just they kind of don't know. They really don't know how it works. Well, here's what's interesting. I just read this. They just know at what point it becomes toxic. Right? Yeah, well, it yeah. could be bad for the liver, right? right. It could be really bad for the Here's what's interesting about it. I, this is crazy. Research from Ohio State finds that acetaminophen affects our risk tolerance. <clears throat> so people find scary things less scary wow. when they take acetaminophen. So like you're going to go uh, skydiving. Mm. Or we whatever. Need, we need to test this theory. They have did lots of tests on it. They've really? done lots of tests on it. Yes. And also. Maybe we could get Adam to watch some scary movies. <laughs> pump me, oh my some, God. Pump me full, full of fucking Pump that's, me full of fucking t- or aspirin. Yeah, t- 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 that's <laughs> brilliant. That's actually brilliant. Let's do it. So uh, they 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 gave it to people and then they would rank they would rank like their fear of doing certain things. And they showed that it reduced it. They also showed that uh, there's three studies in which individuals participated in an online risk game, and it also confirmed that people are feel less that things that are normally risky aren't so risky anymore. So it affects your decision making, which is interesting. This mm. can be manipulated if you think about it, right? It also uh, makes uh, good feelings less good and bad feelings less bad. So it blunts your the range like of feelings. Like antidepressant, kind of. Huh? Like an antidepressant. Yeah. How weird is that? Hmm. Isn't that interesting? That is. So what's interesting to me is we've been taking it for so long, we don't know how it works. <laughs> Whoa. That's crazy. That's mind-boggling. Yes. That's yeah. so crazy to me. Is so, that recent? Is that a recent? So there's some studies that have already shown this, but this new one is like confirming it. Wow. Like that it makes scary things less scary. So now think about this. Hmm. So I would like to experiment with this. Like if there's a situation that, because, you know, acetaminophen is pretty safe if you take it occasionally. You don't want to take it like all the time because it could be um, harmful to the liver. Definitely don't drink alcohol with it. Um, but and you, supplementing with glutathione is probably a good idea. Um, yeah. But when you take acetaminophen. But think about it. Like you're going to go into like a job interview or you're well, going to go do I something kind heard, of scary. Yeah, I have heard this from um, classical, classically trained musicians will do beta blockers before That's they different. perform. Yes, yes, yes. But, but it's like, you know, just to keep them calm and so their heart rate doesn't get all... 
crazy. Uh, but now add that on top of like something scary that, you know, yeah. you have anxiety over. I wonder. Yeah. You know. Did you know what sport you guys want to guess what sport abuses beta blockers the most? Um, cycling. No, no, Not no, cycling. no, 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 no. No. Cause yeah, remember I, beta blockers. They, tra- is they, it a traditional sport or is it something obscure? I know. I, was gonna uh, say like I wouldn't consider it poker. obscure. <laughs> if I say it, you guys will know what sport it is. Because remember, it's it, it, it caps your heart rate, right? So uh-huh. it's like you don't want to do like, so a, like where you like exert something yourself. like right. archery. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Short, like, I would, by the way, I'd consider that obscure. By the way, archery. Yeah. yeah like a, I like I would think, I think traditional. It's old, that's older than baseball, if I'm not mistaken. It's not uh, like how old it is. Obscure. <laughs> I mean, by like it, that list <laughs> I just read off sports. of all the sports. Yeah, like that yeah, yeah. that's yeah. not even on that. You know what I'm saying? But like shooting sports. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Where you're trying to be do you know? Didn't they used to do stuff for back in the days? For shooting, like didn't they didn't they do that like before wartime and stuff like what? that? Give didn't didn't they give soldiers like stuff to I don't do think that? Beta blockers. They didn't. I don't think they had beta blockers hmm. back then. Oh, I thought I thought there was a, no. dr- a drug or something. Used Methamphetamines. To, to help. Yeah, that wouldn't help that with that though. Would no, it? no, that would be, opposite that, of a that would be the opposite. <laughs> you know who used be- methamphetamines like crazy? Hitler. 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 Yeah. yeah. No. You ever watch that video of him where he's like? Did he use psychedelics too? Was not he a psychedelic guy too? No, his doctor would give him methamphetamine injections. All the time. There's actually a video of him at the Olympics, the one that was host, uh, hosted in Berlin, and he's tripping, dude. Yeah. You look at him, and you can he see- He's like, high most of the time, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Hey, yeah. speaking of the Olympics, you know that, uh, so it was what, 2012 when London had the Olympics, I think, something yeah. like that? Yeah. We just got back from there. I didn't know this existed. Do you know that the tallest slide in the world is there? <laughs> what, slide? slide? Like, <laughs> yes. What? Bro, I wish we would have known that. I would have totally wanted to go that. Hell yeah, I love like, slides. Pull it up, Doug. Look up the, the tallest slide in the world in slides London. Slides are awesome. Come on. And they they built it for the Olympics. Wait, what, what was it for? Like, I mean, they it's this big old, you'll see, it's like this big and tower. And you can actually go down it? Is it oh, in yeah. the building? Like inside? or is it? So the, it's, it's, this, it's, this, it's this, like, you'll see, it's like a red spiral like structure. And I don't know if it's like a viewing thing up top that they yeah. built for the Olympics so people could view the city and stuff like that. But the top of it is a, is a slide that you go all the way down, and it takes like a minute to go down the entire Dude, thing. Who doesn't like slides? Yes, and you reach like a really good top speed. It looks it looks like a blast, dude. Watch yeah, it. I want to see what this. Yeah, looks watch like. when Doug pulls it up. I'm there angry it is. now. What the hell? Right? Oh. That thing's giant. Isn't that cool? You imagine sliding for a full minute. Yeah, you had time to think about things, and it's like amazing. a good drop for a full minute. It's not like a. It had I forgot so, how many turns. You in remember? It. Remember when you were a kid and you wear shorts? You go down a slide and it just catches your skin. You go, uh, I told oh, you no. I almost sliced my toe off. Right? What? Yeah, when I was a kid and I went down one of those metal slides that had like uh, you know a little bit of it was rough and exposed. Yeah, and I went down without my shoes, you know, barefoot. And then it caught. We're nineties kids. We don't care. Yeah, right under my big toe, and then my toe like flopped. Oh, Ooh. yeah! I had to go get it Ooh. stitched up. Oh my god! Yeah. Bro. I did walk, a lot of crazy things when I was a kid. Funny a little yeah, bit. A little yeah. Bit. Playgrounds were pretty dangerous when we were kids. Yeah, yeah. Or you I, got burned, you know, from the oh. uh, just yeah, your skin. Bro, touching. You know, my kids broke their arms on the monkey bars. You, when you go to playground, I take my kids to playgrounds right all the time. Mm-hmm. The ground, I don't know what they make the ground out of, but I could they jump head first into oh, it and I'd be okay. Squishy stuff or whatever. Yeah. And the monkey bars were so high, I fell off one, broke my arm. That was another thing. You were one of those kids. Yep. We had, do you guys remember what we had to break our falls? Tambark. Yeah. Tambark. But it was all <laughs> sparse dirt. because yeah. kids no, would throw it. All asphalt. The time. Yeah. yeah, it was asphalt. <laughs> I yeah. fell Doug, on Doug, asphalt. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I, re- I have, yeah, I have actually real. weird That's memories of happened. like even like some like some park being out where there was like hard dirt and like a pipe running like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Like I have memories of seeing shit like that. I was like, it's really how it was. Just, ah. Remember the one that, that, what do they call that? Where it's like you spin like this thing go around. Right. Yeah, yeah, and some kid would get caught underneath it. Oh, jeez. Try and try and fling it as hard as you can. Yeah. Try and throw the kids He's off. Like, oh. You know they still have those. I mean, they did when Brianna was a little girl. One oh. of those steel. They've gotten rid of merry-go-round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most yeah all. she got she got hurt on it. Oh did yeah, she? yeah, she got a massive uh, oh, bump on her head. Dude. I, I can't. I don't think I, I've seen one in a long time. They've gotten rid of most all of them. I think. Yeah. Have you guys seen in other countries they have like uh, parks? That have like fitness equipment on them. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. they're all, but they're body weight operated. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, uh, they're, they're cool. Where I used to live, yeah. they, they, yeah, they built, it's actually really cool. Um, where I used they to have live. it. Yeah. Right at that part. Actually, and where, it's like strength where, training where, where, Tina, where Tina lives, yeah. that, that Coyote Creek area over yeah, there, yeah. there's a, there's a walking park over and, and there's a station. And it's it, like strength training. It has like 12 equipment. stations and it's like full body. You could do a leg one, a chest one, a back one, and it's all, and they're really cool. Yeah. It's cool. 
They're engineered really neat too. That's yeah, we, cool. Katrina and I, every once in a while, we used to, we'd go for a walk and then we'd like do a little station then we'd walk around a lap then do a station. Do a and walk around. Uh-huh. No, oh. I think, I don't, I think we're the only people that ever used it, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the unfortunate part. I think that's a really cool thing that whoever decided to start putting those in, but it, it's unfortunate that I don't see anybody doing Speaking it. Speaking of workouts, did you guys watch uh, Tony Ferguson get trained yes, by his dude, new trainer? I put that in my notes. Why, dude? <sighs> I so know. I don't know what the workouts look like. All I know what was posted. Okay. Right, yeah, yeah. And Tony Ferguson, top fighter. And Goggins is, I mean, I know, I know coaches who train athletes. This is just, they cringe when they look at it. It was like walking lunges down the field, like to puke. Basically it was run as hard as you can and keep going. It didn't seem like there was any rhyme or reason. To the what was the going interesting on. part about that too is like, cause I, you people know, I were can, defending it. Oh, it's for mental toughness. Okay. So that was the point I'm going to make. Yeah, right. Okay. So, this is why it doesn't make sense for Tony Ferguson yeah, because I get it. Tough. If, if like, you know, that that's your, your thing, right. As you, you're known for tapping, you're known yeah. for giving up because you just, you just don't have that mental fortitude or yeah. you've never trained the grit. Like, so like, okay, that makes sense. Like you, you have the self-awareness, you know, you're that's the opposite of Tony Ferguson. That's like what he's, he's known for being able to take a punch. The guy's got some of the most brutal fights and he still keeps coming forward. That's why he's so fun to watch. So, that of all people, I think that's so. That's if that's the reason, it doesn't make a lot of sense no. to to do it with. That's not his. It didn't look like there was any programming or anything specific. But again, it was really short clip. It's just this cringe. Is I forget um, which Niner player it was that was like training with like Hani or one of those like oh, bodybuilder, bodybuilder guys, and then they just trained all yes. yeah all bodybuilder stuff and like had like the worst season he's ever had. Yes. you know as a, as a result that just happened just recently with a, yeah, with a player. It's just like what are you doing? Like there's a specific specific way to do this that's going to optimize what you're doing in your sport like why are you meddling with that like, now he could be he could be playing 3d chess though right now sure okay okay here okay. We, the sport that's is why i said what i, what the, I saw okay I don't the know sport what has turned into uh the biggest personality it's all about selling the the uh, fight and the event yeah, that's what makes you money. and the more people talk about it what a better way to get people talking about it right now than sure. to get to do something out different like that and sign up with David Goggins, who's yeah. super famous, right? Been all over the place. And people are like us and traditional coaches. Maybe he's go, just doing it once, uh, you that's know, what, occasionally. Yeah, maybe the, like 99% of his training. That's is done why like, I said that. And yeah. then he then he goes for a run and says he's hired Dave Goggins. And then we all talk about it. It makes mainstream right. news. Everyone's talking about it. And in which so, in that case, who cares? Yeah, right? exactly. That's yeah, what I was, that's what I, that's so why there I could said be that. 3D chess going mm. on right here. Yeah, and because if that's the case, then he's brilliant for doing because that. Because listen, any moron could, could be. can train an athlete and just make him tired and beat him up. Like any idiot, you don't need a trainer for that. You just need someone yelling at you to keep going that's yeah. it that's what it looked like but who knows who was it I, I was reading either comments or somebody who was uh, talking about that they uh, they live next to david goggins there was neighbor? a comment oh, we don't it? know if the guy was real though. oh yeah. that's what it was. okay never mind it's not like a, i can't say i verify it's not credible source. it's not credible who knows but it was interesting though yeah. <laughs> some guys like he's my neighbor and he's gonna die in like 20 like 20 years before me because he he watches everything he does yeah, he's like yeah, super he's, crazy and beats right. himself up but that's not hard to believe i mean that's kind of no like, no you know. you know what i wanted to bring up was the thing that you sent over to me i thought this was really interesting so uh i i shared this like a week or two ago and i talk a lot about like the difference of buying a home today versus buying a home 10 years oh, or yeah. 20 years ago yeah see this is i love this and uh you know that everybody knows like oh my god it's like so ridiculous like you it's this, impossible to own it's a impossible home. to own a home and something that they don't they don't contribute to that is we have over decades now have pushed the the size of the home they're not what, controlling for these things. yeah they're, they're, a lot of that stuff is not controlled for the average home size that we live in today <laughs> and you go back to your grandparents and most of our grandparents would say oh yeah we bought our home cash for ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars but it was also 900 square feet and there yeah. was six of us that lived in a two-bedroom uh, small and uh, tiny little houses uh -huh. And when you control for what was the the average, you know, home with one income that someone bought back in say like the sixties or seventies compared to what it is now, it's like eleven thousand or eleven hundred square feet to like three thousand yeah, square no, feet. No, the average home size yeah. in nineteen fifty was under a thousand square feet. By the way, they had more kids back then than they do now too. Today the average home size is over twenty five hundred square feet. Yeah, where are you going to put your big screen TV? Yeah, that's the other thing. So here's the deal. When the people make these comparisons, and yes, there's definitely inflation. 
There's definitely markets that have gotten crazy because they're distorted, okay? But across the board, if you lived literally the way your grandparents did, you'd be way richer than they were with your current salary, okay? If you lived the way they did, how did they live? They didn't have a, an electric dishwasher. They probably didn't have uh, a, a washer and dryer, or if they did, it was just a washer. Grandma dried things on the yeah, court outside. On the line outside. They didn't have TVs at all. Definitely didn't have internet. They didn't have cell phones. One car. They didn't have multiple cars. You know how rare it was for a household oh, yeah. to have two cars yeah, in the 1950s? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They had one car, yeah. and it was a car they, that- you, If you went out to dinner, it was like a big treat and occasion. They you went out most, to dinner they once cooked, a month. They cooked most all their meals yeah, at home. You, you had meat once a week, maybe, twice a week, maybe. Like, like, you know, if you compare apples to apples, yeah, yeah. you're way better off. But what we do is we say, oh my God, I can't afford to buy a house. Meanwhile, you have like 10 streaming services, cell phone- Every all these devices, your house is way bigger. You want to live in a does this, urban area with you know everything around you. Does this go in line with your mentioning something about Walmart and like tiny homes? So I mean, I actually had that originally on my notes that I haven't brought up, which I think so. This is interesting to me too. Okay, so we we keep blowing out these prices and the price of a home, and it's be, it's becoming like unreachable for this kind of this population right now to buy the average home at right. least <laughs> on, on, on these conditions. And so there's also been this counter movement of like the minimalist, right? So you've seen that get more popular in the last decade or so of these minimalists. And so you're seeing a lot of these, and we know in California, what was it last year or the year before? It was two years ago, and maybe now the California passed that law here in the Bay Area where you can you actually can build like a little house. In your yeah, backyard. you can put an additional unit in like these track home backyards now. And so it's, and it's, of course, this is what happened is that ADU thing has gotten really competitive. And so now you have these tiny homes. Uh, that are becoming like really affordable. The Walmart tiny house, maybe Doug can. You pull can buy it up. Walmart, Amazon. I think sell some. Yeah, they're like the, they're like ten, twenty grand. Bro, less. Wow. It was like five grand for this Walmart tiny house, and it's so, got bedrooms. And wow. Yeah, it's got everything. It's got a bathroom, shower. It's a house. Wow. It's a full on house, and it's it was like literally like five grand. I think is what what's it was. to stop somebody from buying a chunk of land, throwing and, five or six of them on their renting. So them. that's why I wanted to talk about this because. <laughs> You know, Serious. I don't yeah. know if I believe Tiny we're going to see the, the housing market come down. I think we are in a period of time where this is going to become the new norm. I just think that housing prices, we saw it skyrocket more than we'd ever seen it skyrocket. The theory is what goes up must come down. Okay, sure. I think it might come down a little bit, then it's going to go right back up again. It's going to come down if they continue to raise rates. It'll it'll definitely crash the market a tiny bit. It's not going to like destroy the market. But I think it'll come down a little bit. And then I think what they'll do to boost the economy again, to artificially boost it, they'll reduce rates eventually, go back cause down another, again, yeah. and then cause another run up again. And then it'll just surpass where it currently is right now. So ultimately, I think most people are going to be uh, out of reach. I think we're destroying the middle class. And I think that this is going to become more normal where families, friends, people go in on a piece of land or multiple or on a property where you could fit one, two, or three of these things and then and live in them. I think mm. that's not going to be that. I think that's going to be normal. Look at that. What wow. Is, oh, that's that nine grand. That one's nine grand. That one's nine grand. But look at that's it. Like I mean, a it's, shed. It, it, they basically are. Yeah, they, look inside though. They found yeah. a way to convert these things. I know when you look at the pictures. So when they deliver it, it's like what? They're like four pieces and they just slap it together for you? Or that's you a good, that's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> Doug, maybe can you read it and see how, how it's done, how it's put together? Yeah. There's usually like the masters like upstairs, like up in the, like a loft kind of thing. Yeah, you, I think on Amazon, literally, you can go on Amazon right now and buy a tiny home. But okay, so this, but this totally highlights your point or the article you share with me. Yeah. If you actually went back to this size of living, like yeah, I don't, most how, grand, my grandparents would love that. How many how many square footage is that, Doug? Crazy. Yeah, I'm, this looks more like a storage shed than a actually tiny home. Um, it is. It's a tiny home though. Look what I see. Look, I just want yeah. an Amazon. Now, these are more expensive than what I just, we're looking at. Yeah, but I, I got to get better information. On there. Amazon, this says uh, portable prefabricated tiny home, and it's $35,000. $35, it's 19 by 20 feet with a restroom. Wow. Yeah, and literally, it's prefab. So they like, boop, they drop it down off on, on your land, and there it is. And it's a, it's a little tiny. I don't think home. these are meant to be lived in. These Walmart ones. What are they for? I think they're just like a, a storage shed. It's a home. It says home. It says no, they call them home. They 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 look like a home. 
That's why they call them no, the tiny. They, they have no. I don't know. So you 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 build a tiny home for your lawnmower. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought about getting one for like a studio. No, this is this but... has become a, a, a serious market. I mean, this yeah. has become a, a a serious competitive market right now, and there's they're passing laws that are allowing people to throw these in their backyards and do exactly what Sal was saying, which is renting them out. Oh, I know people that have done I've heard this about that, yeah. that have put these these little things in the back of their one of their back of their houses, and I know people that actually Airbnb both of them. Like, so mm-hmm. they'll have. And the front, yeah. the main house being Airbnb, yeah. and then they have the little small, little tiny house in the back, and they're Airbnb, you, you and they're cash flowing both of them. You know what else I'm totally. saying too is people are with the Airbnb, they're buying land with nothing on it, and then they're making like these experiences houses, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. A, a yurt and a a, a tree house and a whatever. You've seen that, um, and they could charge a shit ton. UFO of one that's in the desert. I think it's a Joshua tree. No, it is a UFO. They built like a UFO, uh, and basically you like enter like up these stairs. It goes up in there, and it's like just big enough for like two people to sleep in it what but yeah it's a trip i mean yeah the experience thing is a whole nother market sub market that's like exploding wow yeah, look at that one Sal. was like just literally on wheels yeah like, oh, they, they drop they just drop it off in front of your house yeah mm-hmm. i guess we're on the same one yeah this is actually i think the tiny home you're talking about is ten thousand dollars wow oh wow that just oh that's not bad yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, it, when you think too, like if you actually had, let's Slap say, an acre in my backyard, and you you connected five of those things, yeah, you got fifty thousand. Like you could have literally. Listen, like, if you were like an angry older dude, no kids, no nothing, bro, like, fuck it, I'm buying some land. That's the man cave waiting to happen right yeah, there. Dude. Yeah, yeah, get isn't out that, of the house. Isn't that like, crazy? Your peace. <laughs> you put it in the backyard. <laughs> I mean, we'll play house. loud music. So I, 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 I do think you're going to see more and more people get really creative with these things. Probably. And you're going to start seeing them. them what if you bought over. two of them and stuck them together? That's what I just, I said, yeah. I said, put five together, uh-huh. 50 grand. You're 50 grand. And you have like five little mini houses all combined. Like each, each well, kid shit. or family member has I've a whole seen house. What they can do with shipping containers. You know, they, they've done a That's lot true. with that too. Like cutting it out, getting sliding. Who was it? That, who was it that we interviewed with? That took Rich Roll. That's yeah, right. Yeah. He, yeah, Rich Roll. Yeah. He took those shipping containers and turned them you into. You can stack them and do all kinds of rooms mm-hmm. with them that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So I think we're going to see that. I mean, between what you brought up about people just not, you know, or we're, we got used to living in big mm-hmm. houses. It's like, you no, know, I mean, if you actually went back to yeah. a thousand square feet, look at shit, you yeah. get it for 10 grand now. Yeah. That's how, that's yeah. how much we have come along, come along with technology and being able to fabricate something like that for so inexpensive. Like you actually can get a house, the same size as probably what your grandparents got and probably mm-hmm. ar- arguably as nice or nicer, probably nicer because it's, there's technology. That they didn't have, you Especially know? if you're handy and you actually yeah. know what to do. Right. Like yeah. it was so funny that South Park. Episode. Oh my God. That was <laughs> so <laughs> dude, good. Bring dude. this up so bad. It's they like went after out. Disney hard. So maybe hard. the best South the Park Panthers episode I ever the, seen. Dude. And this is why I love satire because it's like right there in front. It's like what everybody's thinking, but a lot of people are afraid to like tackle, uh, you know what they're seeing and, and the trends and things in Hollywood and everything the, else. The, and it was hilarious. The fun, I mean, the, the part you were talking about just now is like you had all these white collar workers put out of business because of, uh, AI, AI yeah. and they go to home Depot. This is a big for, fear right now. Yeah, yeah. They have to like look for work at home Depot while the handyman are driving by and like Mercedes. They're, <laughs> hey, they're, my, yeah, they're becoming that. the billionaires. My favorite part about that was years ago on here. We speculated on that. Yeah. That, you know, AI, AI gets so sophisticated that it basically puts a lot of the white collar jobs yeah. at a business. And then, to be a like, whole, you can do everything except for if you uh, need hands. Yeah, you know, you need arms. <laughs> I know. So it was so great. Uh, they nailed it, dude. And they just oh, eviscerated yeah. Kathleen Kennedy. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was crazy. She's tanking Disney. Yeah. Speaking of creative stuff, I learned about actually. You guys might find this really interesting. I learned about a technique to dramatically improve your creative thinking space, and they actually tested it. So Thomas Edison used to do this. I don't know if you guys have heard about this before, but Thomas Edison, whenever he got stuck on an idea, he would hold a steel ball in his hand. He'd sit back in his chair. He'd close his eyes and he'd drift off. And when he'd fall asleep and drop the steel ball, it would wake him up. And then he would have- He'd be startled and something would- He would have great ideas. What? what? Yes. So <laughs> no. The startle effect. They call it the um, hypnagogic, hypnagogic state. So this is the space in between sleep like right before you and fall. wake. Oh. And they tested this. They actually tested this with people where they is gave the them- the same as like lucid dreaming, like that same state or like a little bit Kind different? of, right? Kind yeah. of. 
So they, they're, they're studying this right now because it actually works. They took a bunch of, they've done several studies now, but they, one of them, they took a bunch of people, gave them a complex math problem, told them how to solve it in one way, but there's another way to solve it that nobody that Dude, didn't tell them. I want to them. try this. Then they had them do the test where they were holding a plastic cup, they'd fall asleep or drop it and wake up. And after repeatedly doing it, the people who did that were able to figure out the other way of solving the math what? test that faster than other people. What? Yeah. Yeah. It boosts creative thinking. Is what it does. Isn't that interesting? Like, how do you? That's interesting. How do you figure that out? Yeah. Back then, like he just he. Well, so Thomas just Edison was just holding said, something and naturally, <laughs> like that had to happen to him a couple times in a row for him to like put, put that together, right? Like, yeah. It just happens one time. You don't think, oh, it's because I was holding that ball and then I dropped it. Look like at, that's not what you think. Look at this. Right? Fifteen seconds in the uh, hypnagogic phase of sleep. I think I'm saying it right. Tripled the chances of finding what was in this study called the hidden role where they had to figure it out. Triple. So three what? times as likely <laughs> to come up with a creative. Yeah, dude. Why haven't we tried this? I, I'm going to totally do this. Yeah. I'm going to totally do this. I'm literally going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold something in my hand that'll wake me up when I drop it. And I'm going to try and doze off. And I mean, see. you're the perfect person to do this because you could legitimately make yourself do that. Yeah. Like I would sit in a chair trying to make myself and it would be the most miserable day ever for me because <laughs> yeah. I'd be trying to fall asleep for like five hours. All we got is em emulate movement somehow, like you're on, in a bus or a plane or something, yeah. and then I can fall asleep. I'll just have Justin make jet sound sounds. You'll be yeah. out. Not even that tarmac <laughs> sounds. Just fucking rolling on the tarmac. <laughs> <laughs> I can fall asleep even yeah. quiet, guys. I can yeah. do it anytime I want. That's why I'm so creative. Oh, shit. Uh, wow. I'm surprised, like, because, uh, you know, we've listened to the, the flow state and, and uh, all those guys on our show that have been trying to, like, hack that with, um, you know, microdosing, LSD, microdosing, mushrooms, you know, all these different methods to try and, you know, uh, be able to unlock new ways of solving problems. I, they didn't mention that. It's wild. So they found that there's a specific pattern of alpha and del delta waves in the brains of the volunteers during that state that could be useful for research into creative thinking. But they, it's still a mystery. They still can't figure out why this is the case. Hmm. So weird. Take some of your uh, shiitake cool. gummies with it. Uh, no, at the same time. <laughs> he said shilajit. <laughs> Sh <laughs> Come on, bro. He <laughs> said the wrong. It's a different wrong mushroom. Substance. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? This is how uh, this is how annoying some. Bro, you be eating them gummies like crazy I right will. now. <laughs> so here's what's annoying. Good. So, I like them. You, you, uh, I like them too. He's talking about the Organifi shilajit gummies. By the way, shilajit. Look it up yourself. Lots of studies. Don't look up shiitake. Support that. No, that's totally different. <laughs> but people are like, oh, it's in gummies. Ugh, why don't they just put it in pills? Now there's yeah. gummies and there's sugar or whatever. It's like, because Organifi is smart. People like gummies. That's yeah. why they do They'll it. They'll actually like repeatedly use it. <laughs> yeah. I, I like a pill fanatic. Like yeah. people take pills all day long. Oh, I I'm, really, I'm so exhausted but with pills. What's funny about this is Me how too. many times do I try and get you guys to take supplements? Uh, yeah. yeah. All day, all every day. Time. And we take those. Like, you guys, we, eat those we run out yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, because they're gummies. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's true. I mean, it's true. And yes, of course, a pill form is a better way yeah, to do that. You don't have to but, put anything else in but it. But the truth is you, you'll be more consistent with doing that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, And it's the and it's yeah. the Prima V Shilajit. I know I've talked about that, but it's a really good- I'm clean, guilty of that with well, like uh, elderberry and also my vitamin C. I, I love the gummy version of all those. I'm just better. I'm like Justin. I hate taking pills. And so it's, when I, ha dude, I have- What's to, wrong with taking pills? What do you guys hate about it? I, I just don't- I, I don't know, man. It, it's just not pleasant. Like it's like really? boring. Like- yeah. I, so. oh, monotonous what? like just i don't well, know you gotta what be it excited is. all the time what the hell's going on here? <laughs> yeah. it's no, just like I, a pill. I don't know why it's just like it's it's such a um i guess it, it's it almost reminds me of like bureaucracy right it's like, what? <laughs> what it's like you have all these like like rule i have to oh, build the pills like, this makes the sense. Uh, <laughs> so you know defiant. it's like rigid <laughs> man, man, man. like here's my schedule you man, guys, man. Man. Uh, i swear you know, to god dude, we're all it, so bad with that i hate that shit yeah but, oh yeah. i gotta take it right yeah. now someone told me okay, so. if it was a bag of gummies though it'd be all right yeah. give me some gummies <laughs> I just, I eat like, like i'm a kid like i'm, I'm having fun you know <laughs> freedom it's totally different yeah freedom freedom Not gummies. Me, the more mo the more medicinal something is the more likely i have to take it <laughs> we can give you the supplement but you have to inject it into your quad or something like, okay cool okay. <laughs> Yeah, like, it enema, must be no problem. Uh, yeah. just, yeah. oh, whoa. Wow. Let's go. Hey, have I have I ever talked to you guys about the uh, origins? Speaking of weird stuff, the origins of occlusion training. 
Uh, Have we ta- we talked about this? Was it Asia? I thought it was a hockey thing. No. Oh, really? It was no, in, dude. Le- it was China or so hockey was the first sport that they Japan. introduced it to. No, dude. And so no. Uh, I got to see if I. I, I know so I wrote this down because I can tell you guys about it, but I want to be I've like heard it before. One hundred percent accurate. Very interesting. Is sure. that a mistake or something that happened? No. So it was a Japanese Japanese researcher. Hold on, I'm gonna put this on. Maybe Doug, you can look up origins of occlusion. Train. Let's see who get there. Let's see who gets there. Somebody first. got really engorged and no, like, <laughs> something's happening. No. Okay, I got it. Here we go. So it it was invented in Japan, and the the guy who, uh, who discovered it, Yoshiaki Sato, a doctor, in 1966, noticed that because when he was kneeling for long periods of time in a Buddhist uh, uh, temple, his calves would become numb and they get pumped. Uh, because he was kneeling so long, he'd get up and his calves would have this massive pump. Uh, wow. Now, he also participated in strength training. So he also understood bodybuilding. Yeah. So he understood the benefit of the pump. So he said, wait a minute. I didn't even lift weights and my calves got pumped. I wonder if that's got some hmm. benefits to building strength. Interesting. And that's where it came from. You guys know the 60s. More. Now, I know that the first sport that we really tested this in was NHL players. Was it? For recovery. Oh, yeah, for okay. rehab. So. Yeah. I know that it it was it was popular for I don't know if it was actually NHL if it was the actual but hockey was like the first like mm-hmm. professional sport that we were using it in, and now it's everywhere. I mean that's just it's it's protocol now. We yeah. haven't talked about occlusion training in a long time. It's uh, well when we it, I mean if you have an injury I think it's for hypertrophy it's great if you know how to use it right but if you have an injury, and you can't perform a strength training exercise with sufficient resistance because of the pain. Occlusion. Oh, such a valid. Oh, you I get so much. I think it's. A, I actually think it's that an isometric. I think it's together. amazing. I think that. Uh, I wish I knew about it when I was a trainer. Oh God. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I would. I had a lot of clients that I rehabbed and that we totally. were, we we were. I was really careful. We had to put them on machines because I was nervous, like because they just got out of knee surgery or totally. hip surgery. Like, man, I, I would have definitely used occlusion training a lot more with the type of clients that I had that had, had I known about it back then. I think it's a. I think for hypertrophy, it's like, okay. I, I definitely saw benefits when I was, uh, you know, doing it for my calves. I did it for my calves during competing it time. It works. And it did work. I got a quarter inch. Yeah, no, it, it definitely uh-huh. worked. I, I just, <laughs> Justin, whenever we talk about calf growth, you, you, great calf size, he looks cool. at us like, we're yeah, idiots. Cool story, cool bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, that's weird. <laughs> what does <laughs> that feel like, guys? You, guys yeah. a shirt you should just try doing yeah. nothing like I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just exist. Yeah, <laughs> you be, be the old guy. You be the old guy. The old grandpa with the big yeah, ass. You guys got the abs and all that bullshit. So give me that. Uh, whatever. For as far as for coaching and training, I want to load this thing up. Oh, so if yeah. you're a coach yeah. and your trainer, and you are not telling your friends, listen, that are coaches he, and trainers. Here's the goal with this. So if you go to mindpumptrainer.com, you can register, and I'm going to be hosting a three part training for trainers. This starts on January 15th. The idea is this. Here's the goal. The goal is to unify the training and fitness community behind a common goal. And I'm going to talk a lot about why we need to be unified, what that looks like, and how we can be effective. And it's not necessarily about training techniques, but rather the the philosophy behind what makes really successful coaches extremely successful. And, And I define success by you make a lot of money, but you also get people really good results and you teach them how to maintain those results on their own. You literally convert regular people into people who now really have a grasp around fitness and nutrition. It was a very difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. And there is a way to do this through different methods, whether you teach yoga or you like strength training or you do kettlebell training or endurance training or mobility, or you do correctional exercise. doesn't matter. Wellness or traditional, you know, Western medicine or sports specific, doesn't matter. There is a way that all of us that that can encompass kind of what we do that'll make us successful. We've trained trainers and identified what this looks like. And that's what we're going to be covering in that three-part series. So sign up, get in there. I hope we want what, what's the target? 5,000? 5,000. Loaded up. 5,000 people. What's up everybody? Buy Optimizers is having a massive sale right now. They sell my favorite digestive enzyme formula. What do you want digestive enzymes for? Here's what you use them for. Helps break down your proteins, fats, and carbohydrates so that you utilize them better. Reduce gut inflammation, reduce gut issues, improve utilization. Check them out. By the way, 
The sale that they're having right now is site-wide, which includes the enzymes and many of their other products. Go check them out. Go to buyoptimizers.com. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 at checkout for an additional discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Kyle from Malta. Kyle, how's it going? How can we help you? Um, well, first it's first of all, it's a massive honor to be speaking to you guys. I mean, I, I, I listen to you every day and you've really changed my life. You've taught me a lot of stuff and just learned for you what still uh, this, listening to bro science and all that rubbish. Excellent. Um, just a quick background on myself is um, I used to be overweight and this this led to I mean me wanting to lose weight and it led to unfortunately uh, an eating disorder which I mean was very unhealthy I got almost addicted to the scale going down and so I'd eat less and less thinking you know it's good without knowing what the damages I'm doing to my I was doing to my body uh then I came up luckily thankfully I came across you guys and came out um got out of this mindset and began a reverse diet to you know try get my metabolism back and since then i've i haven't gained much weight only around nine pounds but i visually i i mean first of all i i feel much better and i i visually put on a, a bit of muscle and i feel a bit stronger as well and now i'm i, w- I was thinking of starting a proper you know bug to really put on proper size um but recently i did a, a test a blood test after i after i heard you guys speak about how important it is and my my testosterone actually came back a bit low uh it came at around 252 and this had me worried and obviously my brain i start researching and it says you know you know it's harder to put on muscle easier to put on fat lower testosterone so i was just i just wanted to ask if it's if, if it's possible or how you would actually go about a bulk with low testosterone yeah, great question. How long have we been? Um, how long have you been out of the the eating disorder? Right. So w- when you started kind of refeeding yourself more appropriately, how long has that been? You no, know, it's been quite like fourteen months now, and now I ma- and it's I maintain at around two thousand eight hundred calories, which okay, I mean, is amazing for for my weight, especially. How how tall are you, Kyle, and how much do you weigh? I'm five seven and I weigh around one four one pounds. Okay, so the question is, uh, you know, is is bulking a good idea while the testosterone seems to be low? Correct. Yes. Okay. So there's a yes. few things. First off, no, it's not. It's not a bad thing, and oftentimes helps yeah. uh, by eating excess uh, extra calories, um, especially if there's a nutrient deficiency present. Did you test to see if your vitamin D or zinc uh, was low? Uh, no. Okay. Now I know you live in Malta, so that's usually people get a lot of sunlight there, but, uh, but all you can still have a vitamin D deficiency, especially if your heritage is Mediterranean. I mean, uh, you know, my, my, my father's Sicilian, he's always outside over here and he had a vitamin D deficiency because people with darker skin don't convert vitamin D as easily. So I would get tested for vitamin D levels just to see where they're at. Cause low vitamin D can definitely, definitely lower testosterone. Um, now if you don't want to test it, you know, you know, unless your vitamin D is super high, you're probably safe supplementing with it. So I would supplement with zinc, vitamin D. I would definitely go on a slight surplus and then I would strength train maybe two or three days a week and focus on getting stronger. And then the other thing I would do is really place a focus on good, adequate sleep. How are your sleeping habits? What time do you go to bed? What time do you wake up and do you sleep well throughout the night? Um, I usually go to bed at around 11 PM and I have to wake up at around six fifteen, six thirty. Yeah. You, you let's, let's get you to bed. I want you to go to bed by 10 PM every night before you go to bed an hour before that, I want you to turn off all your electronics and try and walk around and be around in, in, in like darker rooms. So that means when you hit the pillow at 10, your brain is ready to go to sleep. Do that consistently on top of the diet and the strength training. And I would get your testosterone levels checked within 60 days. And I would be surprised if it didn't go up. Yeah, I think it will. At your age at 20, I have seen personally testosterone levels fluctuate, Mm -hmm. uh, like remarkably. I mean, 
going from low to high, not just low to normal, but from low to high, just by addressing some of the things that we're talking about. Testosterone is re is incredibly um, receptive to lifestyle or reactive to lifestyle, I should say. Mm -hmm. So a, a guy your age can depress his testosterone tremendously or make it go up tremendously simply by lifestyle. As you get older, it gets more difficult. But at your age, these you can swing testosterone in the opposite direction by working on a few, on a few lifestyle things for yeah, sure. You're young enough that we don't want to start taking synthetic testosterone now. We want to try and figure it out naturally first. I think there's a, a lot of things that we can try and focus on first and see if we can improve that before resulting in, in having to do like hormone yeah. therapy. And Although that's a, a, a possible option if we have to go that route. But I think first we need to check some boxes. It's, and, it's much less likely with someone your age. Yeah. Have well, you, do you, do you look at protein and fat intake as well? Or do you just count calories? Um, no, I, I look at, I look at um, fats. In fact, recently I've increased uh, after I got the results back after I heard you guys speak about it. Before I, I was, yes, I'm consuming fats quite, like quite a bit because I was always like, oh, I'm, I'm a volume eater, I'm a volume eater. But then recently I, I heard you guys say that that's actually a sign of not, uh, um, yeah. not eating enough fats. So I've actually, I've increased now to around 90 to 95 grams a day. Okay. okay. Well, that's not bad, but yeah. I would bump that a little bit. I would go with the fattier pieces of meat. Um, red mm -hmm. meat is typically pretty good uh, for someone your age, especially. And with low testosterone and then supplement with those nutrients and get to sleep. And then in 60 days you should, and then strength train. Are you yeah, following what's your training look like? Yeah. What's your program look like? So I do, uh, I do five days a week just, uh, and it's split. So push for legs oh, and yeah. let's push. Cool. No, and then, let's push anabolic. Push and then anabolic. legs again. Yeah, yeah, Matt's yeah. anabolic. You're going to be in the gym three days a week and right. you'll do trigger sessions on the off days, but that's it. That should, okay. that should, yeah, that should, that should get you some good results. And if you're getting stronger in the gym, uh, then you're moving in the right direction. Right. Doug's gonna send okay, you. Doug's you. gonna send you over maps and a bulk right now. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah. And then I love. Much. I love for you to circle back with us in about thirty to sixty days. So give it give it a good thirty to sixty days of consistently doing maps anabolic with bumping the fat and the calories, getting good sleep, and maybe the vitamin D and stuff, getting good sleep, and then circle back with us. And I, I think within 30 to 60 days, you'll already start to feel and notice a difference. Yeah, you'll notice yeah. with your libido first, Kyle. So you'll notice that your libido starts to improve and increase and strength starts to go up. And then that's typically a sign that your testosterone is is moving in the right direction. But it's it's rare for someone your age to have to go on uh, TRT unless they abused anabolic steroids or something at an earlier age. It's it's not it's right. not common. There is even a step before testosterone where they could put you on HCG, something called enclomiphene, but that's even beyond what I think is going to be necessary. I think what, what I said, if you do that regular, I think you'll see a, a, a nice improvement. Are Do you spend a lot of time inside or do you go outside a lot? I mean, I, I do spend a bit of time inside because yeah. I have to study and university yeah. and all that. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I would, I would bet. I, go get your vitamin D levels test, but start taking it now. Yeah. Five thousand IU's right. a day with zinc, um, and then go get your <laughs> vitamin. Outside. I would be, yeah, dude, because you see this a lot nowadays with kids your age. Is that they're because they're so, they spend so much time in front of their computer, either studying or playing video games, that um, you see these depressed levels of testosterone. I mean, you need sunlight, especially if you're, if your family is, you know, generations from the Mediterranean. Um, and I can tell you look like you have olive complected skin. You you need more sun than even like Justin doesn't need that much sun, right? But someone like you or I needs a lot more. Adam needs the most because well, he's, he's got Mexican. <laughs> I'm the I, ghost. I mean that we should add that to our recommendation. Uh, you should make an, a conscious effort definitely to, to first thing in the Go morning outside. to get outside, and even if it's just ten to twenty minutes, like just get out there, get outside. If you can bring like your laptop or whatever like that, so you can st like any chance you can get yeah. to to sneak outside intentionally to just get more natural sunlight. Man, you guys got the best beaches there too in the world. Like there's no beaches, but they're amazing. Go outside. Go yeah. outside. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. You got it, man. Thank you. Keep, right, keep, let, let us know how, yeah, it, how yeah. it works out in about in about 30, 60 days, okay? Okay. Thank you. Keep it up, guys. Thank All you. Right. Yeah. Thank you.
Yeah, they have their gore. Have you ever seen pictures of Malta? No, and oh. I don't. Is he like close, or is do you know for sure like how big is Malta? Is it's it a like, tiny island. Show, oh, it is. Yeah, show show. Oh, okay. Pull up Malta, dog. You gotta look at this gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, right. In the Mediterranean. Oh, course. it's gorgeous. Yeah, weather's gorgeous Anywhere there too. There is like amazing. But you know, like uh, you know, kids at this, you'll see this all the time when they see when you see these radical changes in testosterone. I mean, oh. look at these. Yeah, look at these waters. Why was he not? He, he kind of like shrugged you off, like he wasn't impressed with the beaches. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Did you see him? I know. <laughs> Sal's like you. Have He's the best just like they're always He's like, there. Mah. He's probably just used He's to like, it. He's like, you know? yeah. <laughs> well, all right, bro. <laughs> Beautiful beaches are everywhere. Yeah. It is yeah. not a big deal. I think. I think you, you see these huge swings in testosterone with young men. Yeah. Because testosterone's reactive. Like a man's testosterone will react to whether or not he won or lost the game. They've yeah. actually done studies on this. Yeah. So, and that's the difference between TRT and natural testosterone. TRT, it's always high no matter what. Natural testosterone reacts. And um, I mean, I've seen, dude, I, saw, I, I, I knew a kid who was, well, how old was he? He was in his early 20s. He went from like the testosterone of like a 90 year old man to like, at the top of the chart, yeah, with yeah. with you can turn it around. Especially huge, when you're young, like well, you. I mean, a couple of things. Uh, he admits that he's inside all day. He well, had an eating disorder, basically starving yeah. his body of nutrients. Yeah. Sounds like he was pretty low fat because even what he bumped it to is still on it's the still kind of low. lower end. And he's overtrained, probably well, five days a week. With yeah. That. yeah, so uh, all those things, you know, uh, smell like low testosterone. So, and I, he, there's a very good chance that if he adjusts all that, that he's going to see a, a major rebound. Totally. Our next caller is Jeremy from Arizona. Jeremy, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How you doing? What up? What's happening? Good. All right. Well, thank you for everything you guys do. I'm excited for to ask my question. Um, I'll go ahead and get to it. Uh, it's a pretty simple question. Um, essentially, am I eating enough? Um, so for some context, um, there's been some slight uh, changes since I submitted the question back at the beginning of September. Um, but um i started my current uh fitness uh journey at about 207 pounds i got down my goal weight of 190 uh back in may uh working with a um with a coach through a macro tracking app we started my calories at about uh 2200 and slowly up to about 200 calories every few weeks um fast forward to the beginning of september i got down to 170 173 pounds taking in 3600 calories and uh, those numbers broke down into 300 grams of protein, 325 carbs, and 125 fats. Um, I would still occasionally get hungry, and the, the scale was, was starting to continue to creep down. Um, anyways, update on that. Um, the beginning of September, when I submitted the question, my, the scale actually started to go back up. I got to 177 pounds. And that was uh, that uh, happened over about four weeks. I uh, pushed my coach to, uh, to down my protein to 250, and we upped my carbs to three 375 because I kind of felt like uh, the protein was a little excessive. Um, so yeah, I'm at about 177 now. That's where I'm holding now. And we just did another bump uh, last week up to 200, back up to 270 grams of protein to get my macro uh, my uh, calorie intake to about 3725. Sounds like so, you're kicking ass. So trying you, to feel, I don't. So the question is, are you eating enough? So basically, am I eating enough and is my protein intake ex excessive? I mean, I hear from, I mean, from you guys, from Dr. Lyons that, you know, the one pound per gold body weight is as sufficient. So I kind of, I mean, I don't feel like I'm stuffing myself. Um, but at the same time, I kind of feel like sometimes I could eat more depending on when I start eating throughout the day. So I just. Bro, you look amazing. Kind of an, yeah, you look amazing. I mean, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, there's good. nothing Appreciate there's nothing dangerous about the amount of protein you're eating, but it so, is more than you need. Are you, are you, are you, is your digestion okay? Your stool normal? I mean, is that all normal? Yeah, as long as um as long as I stay up on uh um uh, my probiotics and digestive enzymes, everything is is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, you could try swapping out some protein for fat and see if that helps with satiety. Okay. Because you're you're upper you're you're surpassing the upper limits of what protein will do for you, uh, typically. So, and then like I guess there's nothing wrong with it. But if you feel like you're hungry, um, sometimes swapping out a little bit of protein for fat when your protein's already really high 
will make a difference. Right. I mean, we just talked about this the other day about like the the benefits of like uh, resisting sugar cravings, things like that. Yeah. I, I mentioned that one of the the things that I enjoyed about the ketogenic diet was running something that was higher fat like that satiated me. And when I was running higher carbs, I tend to have more cravings. And this is how exactly how I'd advise you based off of how you feel. Like I would play with both. I go, hmm, let's uh. Let's add a bunch more carbs if, or calories uh, from carbs and see how I feel. Are my workouts better? How are my cravings feeling? How's my energy? Assess that and then go the opposite direction. Lower the carbs a little bit and really increase the fats and see how you feel on a higher fat, lower carb. But even with this protein and being so high, you could even swap out. Oh yeah, no, I would I would get the protein down. A, that's where that's where these extra calories are coming from, yeah. obviously, right? So keeping your calories the same, reducing the protein down to say 200, 250 at the most, those extra calories now, partitioning those yeah. over into one time I would go really high fat, say for a week or two, see how you feel. Then another time, use those extra calories over in the carb department. Yep. And the things that I'm assessing are, how does my sustained energy through the day feel? How does my digestion feel? How do my workouts feel? And how do my cravings feel? Yeah. And based off of those four things, I'm going to assess where I should put more of those calories at. And so yeah. just that's, you're in a good place though. You're so, in a, to play around yeah, with Yeah. And stuff. to be clear, Jeremy, uh, protein in, in a head to head competition with other macros is the most satiety producing. However, if your fat intake is not meeting your demands and your fat isn't super low, it's at 125, but your calories at 3,600, is that correct? Uh, currently we're at the, we just bumped up to 3,700. So if you're at 3,700 calories and your fat is 125, that's relatively low fat for that many calories. Uh, or at least from my experience, the fat needs to be a little higher. If your body wants more fat, it's going to kick up your cravings. So in extreme situations, people will go super high protein, super low fat, and they'll just have this insatiable hunger. So I would play around with it. I think Adam right. gave the best advice to see which one makes you feel the better, the best. As far as the results from protein are concerned, right. I mean, 200 to 220 grams of protein, you're not going to get any more benefit from any more protein for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what's cool about where you're at. You've built an incredible metabolism. You got, room. you got a great physique right now. Like it sounds like you're pretty damn good. All It's like, I'm, I actually go back and forth between this based off of what I'm trying to do. Like, let's say you're getting ready to go on a trip camping or on a vacation with your family for a week. And you're like, Oh, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to be as active. I'm probably not gonna get the gym as much. So I'm going to shift over and eat a higher fat diet. So I'm not, so those cravings aren't hitting me on time or I have a week where I'm going to be doing something that's really physical and active. Like, oh, I'm going to bump my carbs and give myself a little more energy because I have this thing that I'm going to do that's physical. Like, yeah. I mean, so play with it. I mean, go back and forth and and, with, and test it and see how you feel. Yeah, and with as much protein as you're eating, I'm assuming you're eating a lot of lean protein as well. Uh, so it would be it could be as easy as swapping yeah. out the leaner protein for fatter, right. fattier. Yeah, enjoy it. Nice so like 300 grams of steak. Yeah, 300 grams of protein with only 120 grams of fat tells me that there's some protein sources that you're consuming that are really lean. So I, I would switch it for fattier sources, and that would be a very easy way to to get the fat up and the protein to go I, down. Yeah, what are, what are your what, – so what, what meats are you eating to get to that 300 grams what, typically? Um, I, I, I mean, lately, uh, I eat a lot of venison, uh, deer meat, um, uh, some chicken breast, but I've actually been doing more um, – Chicken thighs, like you guys suggest, because yeah. chicken breast it can only you can only take it in so long. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much along the oh, lines bro. of what yeah. I There you go, in. right? Yeah, right beef. there's your go, answer. Go, yeah, go to ground beef. Or, have some ribeyes. Yeah. Have some ground beef. Yeah. Have some chicken thighs. Like yep. just simply and then, salmon. Yeah, the, I mean, enjoying those fattier meats. Uh, you're in a perfect place. It'll probably that. take care of the. I, I would. I'm. I'm going to guess that that's probably where the extra cravings are coming from. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. All okay. Right. Well, cool. I mean. What are you uh, following? Sorry, go ahead. Are you following one of our programs? What are you following right now, lifting wise? Um, I'm uh, I, I'm in the second phase of uh, anabolic advanced. Oh, cool! Oh, beautiful! Yeah. Nice. Oh, cool! How's it working for you? Yeah, I, I like it a lot. It's def um, <clears throat> I went from I mean, it's still uh, I, I went from really high volume um, bodybuilding type uh, type stuff, and I learned I I got on with you guys uh, a couple of months ago, and hearing you guys talk about all you know do less work to elicit more change and it took me a minute to kind of um you know m mentally shift to that and i mean i because i was lifting a bunch i was doing a bunch of cardio and i just felt like i, I was like oh i i need to keep doing more and more and when i'm hearing you guys oh let's tone it back i 
it took me a minute to, to switch to that, but it's actually been, been really good. I kind of tone in the back a lot and I just, you know, I'll still go for my walks after I work out and whatnot, but, uh, yeah, it's been really good. Awesome. Yeah. All right, awesome. man. Stay the course with that then. Yeah. Doing good, bro. All right. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank right, you. Yeah, if, that's, that's 300 grams of protein with 125 grams of fat is a lot of, like, well, that's exactly like not, I mean, you hit it on the head. I'm glad you said that. Cause it, it, I don't know why <laughs> that didn't dawn protein. on me right away. It was like, Oh shit, that's what he's doing. I would not be able to hit 300 grams of protein and 125 grams of fat. Cause I don't eat really, really lean. Well, yeah, no, oh, we, yeah. we eat I beef like lean and meat, oh, yeah. ribeye yeah. and like, yeah. yeah, dude, that's like, get rid of the chicken breast, get rid of the fuck. And venison's lean as fuck. Too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and, and uh, probably hunts, right. Probably why he, yeah. why he does that, which that's cool. That's cool to enjoy that every once in a while, but man, go get yourself a, some high quality, some tri tip or a ribeye and go yeah. enjoy those. And your his calorie intake is phenomenal. He's got abs and he's at 3,700 calories. Oh and, yeah. He's killing it. Yeah. No, he's in a great place right now. Our next caller is Mark from Pennsylvania. What's up, Mark? How can we help you? Hi, gentlemen. How are we doing today? We're doing good, good man. man. It's a good day. This, yeah. this is uh, pretty exciting. I uh, started listening about two years ago. A buddy of mine is a PT, turned me on to your podcast. I came for the fitness, got hooked into the conspiracies, and stayed for the everyday fatherly <laughs> advice and all that good stuff. Awesome. So appreciate what you're doing. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you. Typical. Lizard people hate us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll just jump right into it. I have my email here. I'm just going to read from it. So uh, I'll get started here. So uh, I've noticed a trend I can't make sense of while running through the MAPS programs. During the heavy weight, low rep phases, I seem to peak during week two of the phase. For example, phase one, week two of MAPS anabolic. I will go into week three of the phase expecting to be able to add weight, but I can't even hit the previous week's weight. Is this to be expected? Uh, I have a little bit of context here. Do you want that or just go ahead? Well, let me ask you a question before we continue. Are you, cause phase two of anabolic will have you go 10 to 12 reps and you'll rest about a minute between sets. Phase three will have you go from 15 to 20 reps with a 30 second rest. Are you trying to add, are you trying to use the weight from phase two to phase three? No, no, I am not. I, uh, yeah, I've been through anabolic performance, aesthetic, uh, maps 15, all of those. And yeah, I dropped the weight down, uh, for the higher rep phases. He's okay. talking about within the phase week two. Yeah, week three. Oh, he's, saying, phase. he's saying, he's yeah, saying, yeah, oh, like phase, in, in phase one of anabolic he, in week two, he's seen a peak. This mm -hmm. is not that, oh, that's I not, see. that's not that weird, but there are some things I still would to peer into and ask, like you, we could be overreaching. We could yeah. be yeah, like. I don't know if uh, you're you're feeding. So if you're if you're overtraining, under eating, if our sleep yeah. is good, where our sleep is at. So and then is the intensity? Yeah. Uh, are your yeah. trigger sessions super intense in between on these days? Are you doing them at all? Like what what's going on with that? Oh, uh, that's one thing. I uh, the first time I ran anabolic, I tried to do the trigger sessions. Uh, some this last time I wasn't I wasn't able to do them. But I whenever this last time I went through, I split it up like the maps 15 context, just cause that works really good with my schedule. Uh, so I do half the workout Monday, the second half Tuesday, and then I just cycled through doing six days a week with that. Um, if that helps. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, it sounds to me when you get into that, cause here's what happens with the volume in the programs for the most part, not all the programs, but a lot of the programs is the volume starts to go up considerably as you go through the program. Okay. So volume, you could, generally, this is not 100% accurate, but you could generally calculate it as weight times reps times sets. So if I squatted 500 pounds for one rep versus 100 pounds for 30 reps, I'm actually doing more volume with the lighter weight with that calculation, okay? Now, I use an extreme example, but and you wouldn't do that, right? You wouldn't go from 500 to 100, but just kind of to illustrate how the volume ramps up so much because the reps are so much higher and the sets go up, it could be that the volume is just a little too high for you. And I personally, when I get to phase three, have to cut down the volume in order for it to keep working for me. Otherwise, I start to find that it's a little too much. So I would cut the sets down as you progress through the sets well, to keep the gains going. Especially, Sal, in the context of what else is going on in your life. So that, yeah. I would have more questions around that. Like, what's your what kind of work do you do? How's your sleep looking like? And do he's you, lifting some big weights. I'm mm -hmm. looking at what you're lifting here. Um, and it, you know, you're getting, what is that deadlifting in the 400 pound range? Is that what that says? 
Right. Yeah, that was, well, that was what kind of surprised me. So the second week of anabolic, the way I was doing it on the Monday, I did 405 for four reps as my top set deadlift. So then that Friday, when I did it again, I dropped 30 pounds just, you know, to kind of help with recovery. The following Wednesday, whenever I was going to do deadlift again, uh, I was figuring that I'd, you know, at least maybe go up to 410 or something, but I was kind of hoping for 415. Well, I got up to 395 on my third set and it was tough. So then the, the fourth set, I just left it and I only got two reps before I failed on that one. So I wasn't even really close. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of what, and then whenever I looked across all my stuff, like the, the big four lifts, this is kind of a trend that I've had, um, with week two peaking and week three kind of stepping back a little bit. Okay. This is mm. great because this is not a majority of the people that buy yeah. our programs, but people like, cause you're strong, you're lifting big weights. And I noticed the stronger I got, the more careful I had to be yep. with modifying the weight and the intensity. Like, you know, once I started to get you know, pulling heavy weight, right. I couldn't just keep pulling heavy weight. No matter how I programmed uh, the program, I had to actually find myself like, okay, well, I'm going to try pulling heavy maybe once yeah, or twice in the space. a little better. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah so I have some theories and I have a suggestion because I think we're all on the same page. I think we're reading into the same thing too. Like you're at, you're at a place now, dude, where it's just not going to be linear for you. <laughs> like yeah, exactly. you're not going to have these weeks where you just get to add weight all the time because you're already really strong. In fact, most of the time you're going to have these little setbacks because you had just a rough week or you overreached a little bit on the last workout. Have you followed our uh, MAPS powerlift program? I have not. I have it, uh, but I haven't run it yet. And the, um, the the reason why the reason why this is where I'm going with this and a suggestion is because it's very methodical about where you need to be as far as your weight training. Like right now, what sometimes when people are just running like anabolic or aesthetic, and they're like, "Oh, last week I pulled 400, so next week I'm going to try 410." They're, they're like constantly trying to up their weight based off of how they think they should feel where that program is keeping you at like, stay at this percentage of weight, go at regardless, this, regardless yeah. of yeah, how you feel of ratcheting up and then high. yes, yeah. instead of ratcheting it up on your own, then overreaching a little bit, then having to go yeah, back a little bit the next week and then overreach. We're, so we're on point. Cause I'm reading ahead on your question here. Um, and if you could scroll down a little bit, Doug, it says here that you did maps 15, the advanced version. So it's about 20, 25 minutes. And in MAPS 15, so you're working out for about 20 to 25 minutes a day, right? Your deadlift, right. Went, up, your deadlift went up 40 pounds. Your squat went up 35 pounds. Yep. Your bench press went up 25 pounds. And your seated overhead press went up close to 15 pounds. So you, you, you're going to have to be more careful with mm -hmm. modifying volume, intensity, and frequency because you're at the place now where you're, you're, you're strong. You're lifting big weights. It's not like... It was when you were lifting 200 pounds where mm -hmm. you could just push it and just progress linear. You're getting to the point now where it's going to be a lot more tricky and you have to be really careful. And in fact, when I, when I, now, when I work out now, if I'm going for strength, I don't try to pull heavy except for once a month. Mm -hmm. If I go more than that, it just doesn't go up. But if I, and I, even if I feel like I can, so even if I feel like I do a workout, I'm like, man, I feel like I could have added 50 pounds. I won't, I won't for another two or three weeks, then I'll go for it. And then boom, I that's got why I think in. maps power lift would, yeah. would yeah. do you well because that's a good call. follow yeah. I think power lift percentages will help your yes. mental like way of like, like looking at how to scale that up so you can peak it at a good time. Yeah. What's your, so let's tell me your max deadlift squat and bench press. Um, I don't know. I've never really done a one rep, uh, recently I did years ago. Um, so years ago, I mean, probably 10 years ago, I did uh five, three, one for a while. Um, and now my max that I've gotten would have been the four Oh five for four. And then, so I don't know, whatever the calculated one rep off of that would be, I've never actually really gone for the one rep okay. deadlift. So you're um, stronger than right you now. Been. I'm currently, I'm currently doing a, a version of the five, three, one again. I just finished my first cycle. I just started into the second one, but yeah, I wanted to eventually look into Like I have strong and I have power lift both. And I've heard good things that my biggest problem, and this might even be the main issue. Um, so I drive truck for a living. So to work out, I'm getting up at like four 30, uh, sometimes like yesterday I was up at three 30 and I do my workout before I go to work. So I don't know if I, like, I look back and I thought my, my sleep didn't seem off, but I don't really get the best sleep. You know, I'm looking at yeah, like five and a half yeah, to six a hours a night, we're six on, and a half. We're, a good night. We're right on point with yeah, what we're yeah, thinking. That's, that's this is why you're just, bro, you're, you're the strongest you've ever been in your life. 
You're not going to see the the continued gains every time you do it. Honestly, okay, so now that I know all that, you know, the advice to do power lift would be my advice if do we if we want to keep seeing these gains and that, that would be the best programming for you. But honestly, I think the best programming for you for health reasons is like MAPS 15. That like that that level yeah. of volume. You'll probably for, feel the best. Yeah, I think if, I mean you're already a strong dude. That's gonna keep you probably pretty damn strong. It's gonna probably complement the way that you work and your schedule the best. That which way, means you'll yeah, probably I like make that gains. for the schedule. Yeah. Which means you'll probably make gains on it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. probably the best route to do that. I yeah. mean, I, I like the original thing I said with Powerlift because I think that would discipline you to like stick to like what the program says as far as not trying to it keep, keep increasing weight based off of what you think you should do based off of what the program tells you. But honestly, MAPS 15 for what you do for a living is probably How many, the better route. Yeah, are you getting a full eight hours of sleep every night? Uh, no. I mean, I, I on the weekends even sometimes if, if I'm lucky, I'll get – like I, I've always – I was never one for like I've heard Adam say like – I hate sleeping. I just think it's a waste of time. Like, but the older I get, the more I realize I need it and I appreciate it. And like part of that is on you guys like talking about how important it is. Um, so I'm, I'm working on it, but during the week, like I, that was also, I kind of had a second, not really a question, just something I was curious about that, uh, we can get into, but, um, so I have, uh, an 18 year old daughter, a five year old son and twin two year old girls. Whoa. So, sleep is kind of a premium thing right now that doesn't happen all the time they still you know <laughs> yeah you're, climb a, you're gonna you know, do, or bend you're, in the middle of the night that kind of stuff you're so. gonna do maps 15 yeah yeah that's yeah. That's, yeah. That that's gonna give you the best results your, yeah situation. yeah because you got you got stress from all kinds of different yeah. angles yeah, i mean yeah. you're sitting a lot when you are up then your sleep isn't good yeah. you got three kids which i know what yeah. that you know i got kids i know what that's like um you and you're strong yeah. uh so and, and so here's the here's the here's the thing the stronger you get the the more um sensitive you are to, to little things yeah right mm -hmm. like yeah. you're a beginner i mean you could have shitty sleep and if you're 20 and you know it doesn't matter but now it's going to make a big difference especially with the level that you're at so i think a maps 15 model and then within that so here's the deal you might think to yourself shouldn't i change it up there's a lot of things you can change up within that model if you worked out for 20 to 25 minutes a day which is about two compound lifts or so there's a lot you can change up. You could do higher reps. You could do lower reps. You could change up the exercises. You can make it more mobility focused. You can increase the intensity. But I think that's probably going to be the appropriate amount of strength training for someone at your level and the context of what your life looks like. I think I don't I think anything more than that is probably going to push you over the edge. Yeah, honestly, if I if I'm if you're doing anything more than I'm asking you just to go for walks because you have a job totally. where you're sitting and driving. It's like, if you find yourself, oh, I got an extra free hour today, or like, well, don't do a long hour workout, then you're doing the right amount of volume and intensity for the weight training. Go for a nice walk. That's you know? it. Or go do things that are more recuperative. You know, Go do some stretching, mobility, sauna, or steam, stuff like that that's more recuperative for you uh, if you have extra time. Otherwise, I think MAPS 15 is, yeah. is a better program yeah. for you. How many hours a day are you driving? Uh, it varies. I mean, some days it's, as little as three, four at most to some days. I mean, I'm in the truck 10, 12, 14 hours. So it, yeah. it just, there's no real set to it. That's why, I mean, it's kind of a pain. Like, you know, even like in the mornings, I'm not always up at the same time. It varies. So, okay. so first off strength training is the best workout for you. That's going to be the most protective, uh, for the job that you do for your, for your health. Number two, take a pair of bands with you. If you don't already on your, on your drives, when you pull over to use the bathroom, do a five, literally a five minute trigger session, pick one or two body parts and just get a little pump. Don't do a crazy workout. Just get a little pump, get back in the truck. That will make significant improvements in blood sugar and recovery and energy, uh, and all in your hormone levels, just a five minute, 10 minute, get a little mini pump. You hook the, hook the band around something on the truck, pick a body part, back, chest, shoulders, whatever. Just get a little bit of a pump and get back in and, and drive off. Every time you pull over to use the restroom, mm -hmm. I would do that. More specific, I like yeah. re reverse flies or rows because you're you're in a rounded kind of forward sure. position on the truck. So doing something posterior would be perfect Probably. just yeah. to kind of do, wake that all up. Okay. And that's one thing I should say too. It is kind of nice. Like I'm not driving straight in those times. Like I haul molasses to farms and feed mills. So it's like... I get out, like I might drive an hour, hour and a half, two hours or something. Then I'm out, you know, loading, unloading hoses, pulling hoses around, doing that oh, kind good. of stuff. And That's then I'm back, good. you know, so my total work day can be anywhere from, you know, four or five hours to 14 hours oh, okay. or something. Okay. So All right, good. That's good. I do get a little bit of movement, but yeah, it's still not ideal by good. any means. So yeah. yeah, good, good. Yeah, no, no. I, MAPS 15 model is, is the way to go, man.
Okay. Um, and real quick, if I have a minute here, um, I know you guys did a, a show with Chad Wesley Smith a long time ago where he talked a lot about sports and kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, maybe this is even on your radar. And you've mentioned before about kids, you know, training kids. And I just thought, man, if if I had, you know, my uh, ideal show like that I would love to hear right now, and maybe you guys have touched on this, maybe you haven't. Um, how would you train somebody, being that I have little kids, how would you train somebody, say, like with your own kids being younger to, and I know you have a lot of experience with the elderly, like at each stage in life, like how would you adjust training, volume, that kind of stuff, break it down? I mean, I don't know, maybe, and you've covered that over over topics over time, but just to have it all condensed into one show, I thought would be kind of cool. But. Yeah, I think that would be a cool episode without getting into it, because that could turn into an hour conversation yeah. right now. I'll give you a generic good answer. I right. think that yeah. it like kind of encompasses a lot of what we would get into, which is map suspension. The suspension trainer is so good for uh, all ages, especially as an adolescent. So as they get bigger and heavier and stronger, you can progress it by making the movements more challenging. They're controlling their own body weight. So the, the risk versus reward is right where you'd want it to be. Um, I would probably do that with most most my kids for the most part, and that's generic. And we could be yeah. more specific. I'll, I'll, I'll make it even more generic. Like play with them physically, okay, uh, until they're tired. Yeah. It's play driven. Yeah, first. your 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 kids will tell you when they're done. So and and you just make it fun. You go climb shit and do shit, stuff with them that's physical, um, or something that they enjoy doing. Like gymnastics is great until they're tired. So people are always like, "How should I program the workouts?" Kids will tell they'll stop when they're done. They'll stop yeah. when they're done, and you just go until they're like, "I don't. I'm tired. I want to sit down." Okay, let's do that. Okay, I like that. And then uh, real quick before I I forgot with my obligatory thank yous, but man, shout out to the production team, Doug and Andrew, and everybody behind the scenes. Like you guys have all have ruined every other podcast that I listen to because. <laughs> I love the fact that whenever you're talking about something, you pop in a picture or video or something like cool. I'm always looking for that in other podcasts and I'm so, so disappointed whenever they don't have that. So <laughs> you guys podcast and the, the, the team in the background is awesome. Thanks, they keep man. up the good work. Way Appreciate to go, it. Mark. Nice They're going to both ask for raises now. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Sending you the bill. <laughs> right All right. Thanks guys. I appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. Man. Dude. Immediately when he was like, I'm a truck driver. I like to train train. I immediately thought of a movie. Oh yeah, it was not Cobra. It's over the top. Over the top. Yeah, yeah. he's got the he's got the yeah, arm wrestling yeah. thing. He is Sylvester thing. Stallone, but yeah, yeah. You um, know, it's it's the stronger you, the better. This is any sport, but the the higher your performance gets, mm-hmm. the harder it is to continue to progress, and the easier it is to scale back to go backwards because yeah. your body's like at that limit. And he's strong. He's a strong dude. Yeah. Like when you're there, it's like uh, it's not linear. No, anymore. man. You like if I lose sleep. It, literally with one day I lose sleep. I'm 50 pounds weaker. On no, I think of it like this, just like uh, we've talked about like professional athletes. Once you get to a certain level, right. Professionally in sports, it's all about like taking care of the body. Like yeah, they're already yeah, yeah. at the weightlifting is kind of similar in the sense that once you've been lifting for decades and you've reached almost your peak strength, it then becomes kind of more about mitigating the stress and all the other things to like stay in the game. Bro, you're going to yeah. love this analogy. It's like, what do they say about, uh, about money, making money. But then once you have it a lot, learn how to what? Keep, keep it, it yep. keep it and let it grow. Right? Yeah. So hundred percent. Our next caller is clay from Kentucky. Clay, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, super cool to be on here. I've been listening to y'all, I think uh, since 2016. So I feel like it's weird to wow. be on with complete strangers, oh, but I feel like I know you all. So wow. That's, that's back when I, we I guess you do. Yeah. We yeah. consider people like that fam, bro. If you've been with us since then. Yeah. We suck way yeah, less I'm now. Tr- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to go back I, 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 and just figure that out. But yeah, I've, I've been running, I uh, started with anabolic and run through a lot of your all's programs. Uh, and so I think for sake of time, I'll read my question just in, uh, they'll stop me and, and, and go through there. And so, you know, I said, I've been following y'all for a while. I think y'all transform my, my approach to uh, fitness. I'm a former college football player. Uh, so I'm kind of relate to you in that way, Justin, uh, coach for a long time. Uh, I, uh, currently, I'm an elementary assistant principal. Dad of two, uh, we own a farm, have horses. I'm coaching my daughter's uh, basketball team. So a lot going on in life. Very busy, active, uh, average about fifteen to eighteen thousand steps a day. Yeah. Uh, and right. you know, we just we just run. Life, life's good. Uh, <laughs> just finished recently running maps. Um, 
uh, MAPS 15. Over the summer, when I had a little more time, I ran Anabolic Advanced, and I really like that. It's really good stuff, and I'm always a sucker for volume. I think it goes back to my, my football days. I just feel like I have to crush myself, and, like, you know, you're not really feeling it. Uh, and I've been hanging on to MAPS 15 for a while, and I finally ran it once school started. I feel like this is the best time. Life's really going to get busy. I've been hesitant because, once again, I said I really like that volume. And my body really responded. It's crazy. My strength <laughs> gains like went through the roof. And it's one of those. I know I, I listened to all your all's episodes and I, I can like almost answer a lot of your all's questions. I know what you're probably going to tell me, but I did not want to do it for my for myself. Uh, strength gains shot up. Uh, and, and, you know, when I submitted this question, I was still in, in phase two with that and kind of looking where do I want to go next? Um, I really like getting the strength, pushing strength. And so I did go ahead and purchase power lift kind of my goals. Right. And so I'm in phase two, week three of power lift and really enjoying that. Uh, and um, strength gains are going up weekly, which are wonderful. Um, but I wanted some advice after that current current goals. I'll be 39 in um, March. I got a spring break trip with the family playing the Dominican Republic. So obviously it goes, you want to be healthy, be able to maintain active and play with my kids, coach my kids. But I was we won't be the, the good looking dad on the beach too. Right. So, um, and then something in the back of my mind, I've always, you know, thought about competing. That's not really my personality. I wouldn't want kids from school to know I'm up on the, doing that, but uh 40th birthday next year, I thought maybe, maybe we have a local show to go do physique. Um, so a little bit about me and just advice with programming, which y'all think I should look at going to next uh, well okay so is your has your programming always been with like traditional lifts like your traditional five lifts and all right i'm yeah. gonna all right well i'll tell you what yep, so yeah, shake it up bro i got something for you that i think will blow your mind because you've been working out for a while you, you were an athlete uh, before it sounds like you've been lifting for a long time um i think old maps timey the old time yeah i think yeah, maps right. old time yeah dude you're gonna see the dark horse program you're gonna see shoulder gains you know, grip strength gains, your core is going to look ridiculous, especially a guy like you, you've got a good base. You've been training so traditionally for so long with like traditional yeah. strength training. When you're done with old time, you go back to any of our other programs and you're going to see big improvements. It's okay. so different from what you've probably done that, uh, you're going to see very fast strength gains in it just from the skill acquisition alone. Mm -hmm. So that would be the program I'd say to do if, next. If I was going to stack your programs based off of you want to get in top shape, maybe even potentially, oh, that's, you're in good shape right now, bro. Yeah, he is. yeah. yeah. I, and you want to potentially get on a stage and compete. It would be old timey now, then anabolic, then aesthetic to get you ready for the show. There you go. If I was going to do that. Now, I would also recommend that you be open minded to what you've already learned about yourself with MAPS 15, <laughs> which is yeah. you're, you're, you're already a pretty damn fit dude. You're very active. You've a father. You're a principal. You got all this stuff going on. 15 is probably where you should spend most of your time based off of kind of your schedule and you got going. And it looks like yeah. you can maintain a pretty good looking physique uh, in that place. So I would just tell you to keep that in mind as you go through what I just recommended for aesthetic and be like, okay, listen to my body. I know that when I'm when I'm training there, that's where it feels the best. I respond the best. But if I were to program programs out, that's kind of the order I would put you in to get you ready for a Here, show. Here's the thing, Clay, that is taking me a long time to learn because you're about to turn forty. I'm 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 in my forties now, and this is what I learned, and this is the struggle. The struggle was, oh man, I, I can't work out like I used to. I can't hit the numbers like I used to. This sucks. It's because I'm getting older. Well, then this is what I realized. I can work out less and not only be as strong as I was before, but in some cases I surpass it. With a MAPS 15 model, I had a PR and deadlift that I had done That's like 10 years, right. pr you know, 10 years prior. Yeah. So in reality, what you're going to notice is it's not that you can't do what you did before. It's that you, you got to do less and you'll be able to do what you did before, if not more. So that's, right. the, it's not, you're not trading. You're not trading like gains for whatever. It's actually like, oh, I just got to change my programming up. But anyway, right. MAPS old time is going to blow you away, especially when it comes to your core and your back. You're going to trip out over how it develops the back and the core because of the the way the, that the lifts are. It's, it's, it's going to blow you away. But then after that, I like what Adam said, anabolic and then aesthetic, but you know, maybe even a MAPS 15 again. Yeah. yeah it, it's, in my mind, you know, I, I'm thinking anabolic. That's what I always fall back into. I feel good. I split it up a little bit, which ends up what being more like a MAPS 15 approach, you know, because right, I, right. I like the consistency of getting in the gym there. 
Um, and sometimes I just don't have that hour. So it's, you know, that's always my fallback program. I love it. I know it's the first one you all did, um, but it's just, it works with the lifestyle. But yeah, no, I'll definitely have to try that out. Excited because that that'll be unique. It's not. I'm sure I haven't really looked at it. I'm sure it's not oh, it's, something. Oh, it's very it's unique. Unique. very unique. Yeah. The athlete in you will yeah. appreciate the challenge of doing something new, and so I think it's a it's, it's very skill based. Yeah, like, it's yeah a, you're gonna learn a whole new set of skills by doing that, which translates to everything else, like famously. But so. the the muscle development you're gonna love. Yeah, yeah, you'll love the way it makes you look. Awesome. Well, All I appreciate right. it. So I don't really. That's kind of answer my question and it's one of those like I, i've been listening for a long time so i appreciate all y'all do you make a difference you've kind of transformed the way i look at it and it's good stuff everything so i uh, keep it up and thank you appreciate you taking the we, time you. we we'll, appreciate the support and we'll send yeah. that program to you clay all right sounds good thank you guys you got it thank man. you thank you yeah that's good stuff bro i, I love that i love callers like that yeah. dude he's in phenomenal shape he's a dad yeah. dad teacher at elementary yeah, principal at elementary school yeah. like cool just give him a new challenge dude the whole time is gonna be perfect but that's that. like, like i mean I, I swear to god man like i keep like i've had to learn that lesson i don't know 15 times since i turned i don't know 39 40 <laughs> yeah. it's like and I, I was is more i struggle with it because i'm like oh man does this mean i'm not gonna be able to do what i did before because i can't get the same kind of volume and the training and it wasn't like I had to scale everything back because I just couldn't. My body was going to be at worse shape. It was I scaled it back and got better shape. Yeah. So it's, it's all, and it's Your what it is. It responds a, better when you give it the appropriate and dose. And this is what, what it is. It's You comment on this, Adam. It's all the years of work I did before. Yes. So my body's hyper responsive and yeah. I don't need to beat the shit out of it in order to get it to, yeah. to, to move yeah. forward. You know, I remind, wasn't it Arnold used to say that he could come in and do one exercise and it'd be more effective than, than, like, than your 50 sets. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's, there's a, there's a lot of truth to that when you've put that, that much mm -hmm. time under the so iron the muscle maturity. Right. And then as we get older, those other, those factors that didn't matter as much when we were in our twenties, like right. sleep and stress yep. and everything like that now matter way more. And so, and then you've built a great base like he has. And so That's I, right. I was laughing as he was, I knew where he was going with them, like Mass 15 and talking about like, oh, I saw all these great yeah. results. It's yeah. like, that's a, a lot of- The uh, lesson here, if for everybody listening, is to listen to what we say. <laughs> we know what we're talking about. I swear <laughs> to God, just do it. You'll see what happens. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. Tons of free fitness guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you.